Welcome to Evangelicalish, where we discuss the good, the bad, and the ugly of the American Evangelical Church, deconstruction, faith, and God's love through it all. Join us for these episodes live on our Evangelicalish YouTube page on Wednesdays at 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 Central, and 6 o'clock Pacific. Let's journey together. All right, well, welcome in, everybody. It is Wednesday night. It is Evangelicalish. I'm Jeremy. Woohoo! I'm, I'm April. <laughs> we, forgot the, we forgot the we didn't, order. We didn't there. discuss the order was, ahead yeah, of time. And it's my fault. Actually, I'm going to blame my children and actually mean it. Um, <laughs> oh, that's cool that we can blame your kids. I, I, it feels good, <laughs> doesn't it? It really does. I, I'm home uh, by myself with them uh, this week. My wife is starting another contract out of town, so she's, she's two hours away working on the front lines, which is cool. Oh, but, well, we'll blame her then. No, 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 <laughs> no, never don't do that. You can, Paul, and you can answer for that. I will yeah, not exactly. be taking part in that. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, uh, but uh, yeah, so a little bit crazy. And then, you know, some of you guys knew that I uh, uh, got, got rear ended by, uh, by an intoxicated individual the other day. <laughs> mm. So, uh, anyway, so things are super fun here at the house. So I take full blame and full responsibility for, uh, <laughs> for our lack of prep on the intro are you uh, okay sure. yeah you i mean okay? so the normal right like the 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 super sore like back and neck and all of that kind of stuff and uh i got a rolled ankle somehow out of Ooh. it I, so my foot that was on the pedal like i guess i went forward so hard and and that ankle is like an old uh you know Ooh. one of my old like uh, uncle rico injuries you know i heard that back in the day you know when we were playing for a state title you <laughs> when know, the weather whatever. comes in it gets yeah. really rough and, mm. <laughs> which is so stupid that that's actually true like <laughs> when it gets cold and stuff i'm like oh i'm feeling my bones <laughs> so, so anyway but yeah it's just like it's it's just so annoying and I, I was telling i was telling you guys pre-show like i'm just like i'm angry today like about the whole thing just because it's it's completely like set my world off like i can't yeah. i can't get stable you know so anyway but i think, uh, I think it's to okay to it's okay to be angry though you know like that's a very like normal feeling it's a valid and, human emotion. Yeah. It's just so first, a human emotion. At first I was, I was like cool with it. Like I got hit, I got out. Like I didn't know the guy was obviously drunk. Um, but that, we hear your kids we joining into that. the show today. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah. They're here. Mm -hmm. Special um, guests. Yeah, absolutely. Not Just one appearances today. For. Bye. Uh, yeah. Yeah. By Aaron Abigail. Um, and so, <clears throat> I definitely, uh, I definitely was like, cool. Like I, I, you know, I never get mad in those kind of situations. I'm like, oh man, dude just must've like, you know, made some kind of mistake or, or done something, you know, whatever. Like then I got out and I get smelling on him and he starts talking about previous DUIs and, and, and all that kind of stuff. And I was like, man, this is tough, but I couldn't even bring myself to call the police. Hmm. Cause wow. I just didn't want to be that guy. Like I just, I felt bad. And I've worked in some uh, some addiction nonprofits before, and so like, yeah, I was just like, man, I just. So my thought was just praying for that guy, and I so I was on the phone with my dad, and my dad goes, "Well, son, he was like, you don't have a choice right here." He's like, you know, there, there's just no other way around this. He goes, "Do you want me to call him?" And I said, "Sure," and he did. So, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> anyway, but today's like the first yeah. day that I'm like, that guy has thrown off my entire week, and I'm just, you know. So yeah, I got I got run into by a, a young a teenage boy once, and and it you know all of a, you, like you say you just are angry like what the hell you you idiot, and then as as we're and then he tried to drive away and he ended up driving into this parking lot and I followed him in and I'm all angry and then I catch myself and like okay, if that was my son and he made that mistake how would I want people to treat him and I made myself all cool and nice little shit then didn't you know contested the the accident and my oh and, man and i appealed it and my insurance company ended you know ended up making it a no fault accident and so I, it dinged my insurance so that taught me mm -hmm. a lesson about <laughs> being kind to young people in an accident well, being kind to young people i <laughs> so i think the best thing that came out of it is i was like i was like like i was talking to this guy and i was like brother do you 
you know, I, I, I was like, I feel like you've been drinking today. And he fessed up to it. Hmm. And we talked, well, when the police showed up, he goes, you said you weren't going to call the police. And I was legitimately able to look at him and go, I, I didn't, you know, and the officer was like, no, we got a call from another civilian is what the officer told him. Oh, mm -hmm. nice. And so it was a good opportunity for me to like, continue to like, like speak into this guy and go, brother, like, maybe you don't want to go to jail today, but maybe you're going to get the help you need. And I, and I hope, cause he's like 24, 25, hmm. you know? And I was just like, man, I just hope that you get the the help and the support you need. Cause you got so much life in front of you. And that was really where I was hung, you know? Yeah. But then today it's just like, it's throwing my world off so much. I'm just like, I'm super grumpy about it. And I fell going up the stairs to deal with the, the, the our guests on the show tonight. And <laughs> Um, and it, it, it's like it, a live audience. It made, my, it made my back hurt worse, you know, and I, I just, so anyway, not, not trying to center, not trying to, anyway, that's a derail. Let's, let's dive off into the topics for sure. Uh, but anyway, appreciate y'all's thoughts. Well, we definitely hope you start feeling better and get yeah. to the chiropractor so you can adjust all that. It's been, tension it's been out going down. So yes. yeah. would you like for us to pray for you? Uh, we'll wait, we'll wait till the end. We'll do like a everyone stretch hand your hands call. out towards I Jeremy. Would, I, I just want you to, um, you know, I've chosen, uh, Jesus to be my everything bagel. Mm. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, just give it all to the Lord then just Tino in the, the comment says y'all are not selling me on kids. We're not trying to <laughs> Tino. <laughs> it is. Yeah. It's tough. Anyway, we, we could talk about parenting. Another night because tonight that is a good topic idea. Anyway, yeah, it is a good topic idea. Absolutely, kids are kids are a major pain in the ass, but they're worth it. They they're are worth much, it. Very much worth it. That is very accurate. Say goodbye yeah. to certain aspects of your life, <laughs> or but all say of hello the to some, <laughs> But say hello to some amazing new ones. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Like poop and, and no, I don't know. <laughs> like poop. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm going to let y'all intro the topic. I'm going to go, I'm going to go deal with our yes, guests. Yes, you go deal with that. Yeah, and we will make sure we, room. we'll make sure we don't play God's Not Dead until you're back. Oh, thanks. Oh, See, yeah. I, I had her keyed up on purpose and then you guys go and do this. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. 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 Appreciate, appreciate the patience. All <laughs> yeah. Right, we're definitely going to wait. Okay. <laughs> um. So tonight we, I don't even know how we came up with this topic, but we were just talking about, we've talked about it many times in the past, just Christian movies. And we referenced God's Not Dead before. And we've actually had a few different comments or requests in messages on our page to do a show on Christian movies. Mm. And specifically to, I think they actually want us to go see the new God's Not Dead movie, but I, I don't think you could pay me to see it. No, but You would have to pay me to see it. <laughs> <laughs> but we did see, I think we've all seen the first God's Not Dead. Yes, which, which unfortunately is, I did. We yes. can easily roast. But tonight we're going to watch, we're going to make Jeremy watch the God's Not Dead 4 trailer, which he has not seen yet. So you get to see his reaction live. And then we're also going to watch the Trump prophecy is, is the actual name of this movie, which I kind of gave it away. I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have told them the name. Yeah. You did. Sorry. We're going to watch another trailer Ignore that of a movie that. title that I will not tell you. Uh, that is also out there, but yeah, Christian movies, why are they so bad? And why I remember when we went and saw God's, we, so Beecher and I, when we were married, we were like early married. I, when did God's not dead come out? Was it 2014? Mm, yeah. Somewhere around 2015? there. 2015. I don't know. Anyway, we saw, we went and saw it in theaters after we, I got probably eight to 10 different texts from different people that didn't know each other that just said, God's not dead. And like exclamation points. Like I was getting these texts from, um, and a lot of them were from people that I hadn't talked to in a long time. And I was like, what is going on? And so, so <laughs> my wife is running through here, by the way, <laughs> good to see you. Uh, so you guys are filmmakers, April, you have that expertise yes. in your household. Why is God's not dead? a terrible, horrible movie and movie series. So I stopped watching after the first one. I have not seen the second <laughs> or the third, and I've only seen the trailer for the fourth. I honestly didn't. I knew there was a second one. I had no idea a third one even was a thing. Um, but God's Not Dead, the first movie, and then we'll get to the fourth movie. 
but even uh, yeah, Be- Beecher said even then we hated that movie. So this is before I ever deconstructed really anything or right. knew what I was doing. I was still a full on evangelical, and I still hated God's Not Dead in 2014 because they make caricatures out of uh, out of their characters. They're very one note. Your protagonist is like this really good guy who desires to just do the best that he can and please God, and the antagonist is like literally an atheist who at one point in the movie, he's like, you're right. I do hate God. And it's like just so <laughs> dramatic. And and just like the idea that a professor is going to get up and make people write on a thing, like in order to pass this class, you have to admit that God is dead. And then he like makes it his home mission. Like, no. But the worst thing about this movie is that, and if you guys have seen this, I am going to spoil it because it's a terrible movie and it's stupid. So if you haven't you seen it, you cannot spoil. Yeah, you movie. can spoil. It's already spoiled. The end of this movie, they build this, they build it up to the very end. The freaking atheist professor, who's the antagonist, is walking, just walking down the street and bam, gets hit by a car. And he's laying there, and one of the main Christian characters just happens to be walking by and runs up to the guy, doesn't call 911, does not offer any medical aid. He's like, sir, this is your chance. This is God giving you a second chance, a last chance to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Would you pray with me? And he's like, literally like has like blood coming out of his mouth. And he's like, I I will accept God. And so then he like barely musters out a sinner's prayer. And then he dies on the on site, <laughs> and then they immediately cut to a Newsboys concert where everyone is celebrating, and they talk about how this kid owned his professor. Like the dude just died. What the crap? Like how? Who who signed off on that? Like at least let the professor live. Like it is so morbid. It, and they were just celebrating, like yay! Oh, he died, but oh, he got saved. What great news! Like, no, the dude just got hit by a car. He had a family in this, you know, in this world. You cannot spoil a Christian made movie because like Hallmark Christmas movies, they are all the same movie. Now, don't don't insult Hallmark Christmas movies like that. <laughs> that is better than these than this Jesus junk that that uh you know christian wood or whatever is pushing putting out you know mm-hmm. it's just christian wood oh I yeah like that. yeah I, yeah, like I, don't, that. I don't know it just it fell off the top of my head i i've had a day um but <laughs> i yeah i just that is the most disgusting premise to a movie i think so i full transparency here i did not see the first one i knew it existed and i saw the you oh movie. you didn't see it sorry I no i was like no yeah th- yeah i'm real i'm real bummed out um <laughs> Uh, I, I did not see the first one. I knew it existed. I saw the trailer. I was like, oh, that's some hot, nasty garbage. Um, and then I didn't even know there was a two and three. So when everybody started talking about the trailer for God's Not Dead 4, I was like, what, did, did like, do yeah. we just not know how to count? Like, like I, I legitimately was like concerned that maybe the maybe the Jesus movie people were like one, four. Like, I don't know. Like, just skipped it, just went straight to four. <laughs> like, they just didn't know how to do two and three. So they Well, just- so the other annoying thing about God's Not Dead, the first movie, and that's this is the only one that I've seen, is at the very end of the film, they give this, like, call to action for everyone to pull out their phones right then, because it ends on this, like, high of, like, yeah, God God won and beat the evil and da 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 And so they have everyone pull up their phones and, like, text God's not dead, exclamation point, to everyone you know. And so that was how I even heard of the film in the first place, because I kept getting all these random God's not dead texts from people that I hadn't talked to in years. I was like, what the crap is this? That's really frustrating. (laughs) Yeah. And like, they were like, they're like, yeah, you can win your atheists and your agnostic friends to Christ. Like, text them God's not dead right now. Don't be ashamed. Like, I can you just imagine? Like yeah. if you're an agnostic or an atheist and getting like a text from some rando you haven't God's talked to in a year <laughs> that says God's not dead. Like, oh, oh, he's not. Well, my lo- my beliefs have changed. I'm going to yeah, give my completely- heart to Christ. By the way, there's <laughs> some really great ideas on this Christian Wood thing. So so I'm going to say Hollywood is really good. Hallelujah Wood. Also from your from your brother, April. That one's really good. Oh, Hollywood. Yeah. That is yeah. good. Yeah, Hollywood is also really, really good. I, I Holy like Hollywood is a winner. Christ Wood. Mm, 
Chrysler sounds a little dirty. It feels questionable. <laughs> <laughs> Paul just got it. I, I was thinking right, the you, whole time. I, I see really where your minds are here. tonight. I see where your minds are. Listen, man. Listen, man. I, 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 I eternally got stuck as like a, a middle school boy. Like, you know, I just like, <laughs> my, like my brain will always like go, oh, that's silly. <laughs> and, and so God is not dead for is about religious oppression in America. It's, it's, uh, it's technically not. The title is technically God's not dead we the people. Yes. We, we the people. Yeah, I think I think it's it time to not. roll that if you can pull it shall up. Shall we oh. shall we watch the All right, here we go. So, you won't relent by Jesus culture is coming next week. Just by Okay, we should probably yeah. mute our mics though so we can all fully accept this for what it is. <laughs> April, I swear Here we go. God. Freedom is a fragile thing. And it's never more than one generation away from extinction. And those in world history who have known freedom and then lost it have never known it again. Let's face it, your God, your book, are in the way. You feel that you're making a last ditch stand for your faith. <laughs> and you've chosen this as a hill that you're willing to die on. Our whole faith started because one man chose a hill he was willing to die on. Boom! 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 No! The hearing of the House subcommittee to order. Right now, that's an effort on the way to mandate universal educational guidelines. Once we decide what a child needs to know, it becomes imperative that every child know it. So, remember the visit we got from social services the other day? I'm here to review your homeschooling environment. Religion has been removed from our schools. They're teaching kids that they don't need God. If your children do not show up at school a week from Monday, you Judge will be Judy. with contempt of court. Meaning you will be incarcerated. <laughs> Shannon said last night she doesn't want her parents going to jail. This is bigger than just homeschooling. I think we should fight this. This is bigger we than need homeschooling. So I you understand what you're fighting here. Our district teaches a revisionist yeah. version of history. If God is for us, who can be against us? Am I around here? Just about everyone else. The country is just not beginning to realize that <laughs> unity means winning under our terms. Uh, oh, Judge Janine, I'm sorry. I've been trying to get rid of Christianity. Fresh. You think that you can accomplish what they couldn't? They didn't have an 83% approval rating. Oh, oh brother. That's part of your plan, isn't it? Keep us all divided so we don't realize that you're really chipping away at our freedoms and liberties. America is a country so blessed to whom much is given, much will be required. You see those statues and those monuments out there? They say, you work for us. You are out of order, Mr. the cartoon. the people, by the people, for the people. Yeah. That's in the Bible, by the way. <laughs> okay, they need a new song. They've used the same stupid song for seven years now. Twenty fourteen. Can, can we just? Out? Can, yes, but can we? It, it, probably earlier than that. But can we pause for a second and realize? Thank God that they took it and ran with it because, you know, it was Crowder originally that came out with that song. Not the. I did voice. not know that. Yes. No, I didn't and, know that. Either. And David Crowder still holds a a special place in my heart. So same. I think I will not deconstruct Crowder. I think Crowder's deconstructed some. I think he has too. From and what? Just was, from some like little little things he throws out there once. I'm like, I think that was part of the. I think that was part of the breakup with the David Crowder band. Yeah, is that he was becoming a little bit more liberal, shall we say? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, but, you know, I mean, the problem with, um, I mean, every character in that movie is a cartoon. Uh, every character mm -hmm. is this two-dimensional. Like <laughs> that <laughs> script was written on a napkin at a diner. Uh, there is, yeah, <laughs> no depth, no nuance everybody's a cartoon. It's, it's ridiculous. And then, like you say, with the text going around, it's, if you're for God, go pay to, to support this movie, to show Hollywood that, we, you know, first, they make it godly act. Well, and first of all, how dare they put Martin Luther King in that trailer? Yeah. Second serious. of all, or any of them, 
Yes. I mean, well, Reagan. I mean, yes. But... Reagan's a little on brand. But, um, Fair. Fair. Um, but so what they were saying with in the, I don't know if you could tell what she was saying, but she was saying the reason that they're choosing to homeschool is because in schools they're teaching a quote unquote revisionist history. And is that not talking about like critical race theory or just teaching actual history? Yeah. Like they're just not teaching whitewashed history in school, but they're, oh, it makes me so mad because it's just so like, what about that has anything to do with God? That was just a hundred percent um like white americana wait god was in the trade oh wait that was ronald reagan sorry okay. yeah I, like I get, what what about that actually sometimes. had anything to do with with like jesus or like they weren't standing up for god at all they were standing up for homeschoolers for parents to indoctrinate their children with their own beliefs and not let them go to school to hear other <laughs> beliefs was basically what I was hearing there. That's, listen, don't don't uh, don't get in real tight on that uh, on that plot uh, because it's gonna ha it's gonna have some holes. Uh, by the way, somebody said in the chat, uh, Crowder did write "Sloppy Wet Kiss." Um, Crowder did not write "Sloppy Wet Kiss." That was uh, McMillan. Uh, yeah. Mark yeah. John, Mark, John, John Mark, John Mark McMillan. McMillan. Yes. Sloppy was. Kiss, so, so Crowder was the one that switched it to Unforeseen Kiss. I think that's accurate. He he did he for sure didn't write the song, right? John Mark Mill yeah. McMillan wrote the song, but right. Uh, <clears throat> back on point. I I just think I think that it, it you know Paul, you brought up a really interesting thing earlier uh, about how it's like they can, they can then turn around and say, you guys go to the movies and you guys, you know, buy these tickets and show, you know, Hollywood that, you know, that Christ still matters in America and that kind of thing. Listen, let's call it what it is. It's a snake oil pitch. Like it, mm -hmm. it, it is, it is a, it is a money grab. It's a great marketing scheme. It's a mm -hmm. great marketing scheme to be perfectly honest, because you can make shitty art and then tell everybody to go consume it just based on their faith. Yeah. And it gives you an out. Uh, you know, Beecher said earlier in the chat, he said, God's not dead, uh, but us filmmakers are trying to kill him, you know, <laughs> like, or whatever. <laughs> and I thought that was a really good point because it's like, it's like you can't just keep, but they're pandering. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and for people to not see that that's just a money grab, like they don't really care if you buy into all that stuff. They just want your, they just want your 15 bucks when you go to the movie theater. That's what they want. Well, and it's also just so unrealistic too, because no, the government's not doing anything with homeschooling right now. As someone who was homeschooled on and off my entire schooling career, if you can call it a career, the government checks on you like hardly ever. Like thankfully my right. parents weren't cultish, culties or whatever but like it would be so easy to teach your kids just straight crap because the it's just very lackadaisical on how they control what is actually being taught in homeschooling so the idea that they're going to be arrested because they're not teaching quote unquote revisionist history which we all know what that means yeah, that means yeah, america was the bad guy some um which we were um, uh, more than some. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, like maybe the bad guy. <laughs> Period. Um, yeah, mm. uh, and, you know, and I mean, the, there the Christians want to get tax credits to for their private schools and for their their homeschooling. They want to literally take money from the private the public school system so they can do those things. And not getting that is is called oppression. And just you know, this movie just is so much of. Christian saying, please oppress us, please oppress mm -hmm. us. And if you won't oppress us, we'll invent some oppression. And it's, it's just nuts. And they, but that they do it with terrible, terrible art is what yeah. gets mm -hmm. me. Well, and, and, and it's why just, not do it with some good art? Mm -hmm. Well, because, because that doesn't, that doesn't pander to the crowd you're trying to reach. I, I mean, I hate to keep pulling Beecher's comments like out of the, he should have been our guest tonight, by the way. <laughs> we should true. just, Paul, we should have just interviewed Beecher in April about filmmaking and, and this whole process. I don't know why we didn't think of that sooner. Um, but, um, if only yeah. I knew where he was. Oh, yeah. <laughs> where, where are you? Um, <laughs> but I mean, you know, he says that he, he said that basically they have to present two dimensional characters because it's the only way to fit their worldview. So, I mean, I, I thought that was spot on because it's like, you know, even the plot is just so 
not only vanilla, but just it's got so many holes in it. It, mm-hmm. it can't it can't be good. There's no complexity to it at yeah. all, right? Like, I mean, a, a lot of the a lot of the things that we intake and that we watch, it is not like it's it's not a it's not a western anymore. These are the good guys and these are the bad guys. It's a very complex um, mm-hmm. situation, right? I, I mean, you look at Batman and Joker, like some of the very complex like. Uh, movies that we've gotten recently um, w- with with that series or whatever. And, you know, I mean, that's probably the best ones I have. But it's like um, it, it, it's like you see you see the turmoil and the strife of the villain and the way that that person was brought up or the situation that they were brought up in. that kind of gives you like almost a uh, a, almost a, a sympathy or an empathy from where they came from and why they became the villain that they are or Mm -hmm. the villain in the story that they are. Or you also see like, you know, I mean, you look at the character of of Bruce Wayne, like, I mean, not always a super likable guy, right? Like at times a villain in and of himself, even struggling internally with good and bad. Right. Mm -hmm. That's what that's more realistic. I think in day to day, probably not as extreme and as magnified, but I think all of us, right we have these internal struggles every single day to treat people well, to treat people poorly, to do the right thing, to do the, do the wrong thing. And that is much more realistic to reality. They are selling a very like one dimensional idea, white hat versus black hat, you know, 1960s Western style. Yeah. And and it's just not authentic. It's just not authentic. And that's not how the world operates. Well, like Sarah said in the chat, it's, it's propaganda. It's just pushing, yeah. it's pushing their narrative and it's creating the story in the way that makes everything that they say and all of those beliefs fit. And another thing that really bothered me about the first God's Not Dead was the way <laughs> they portrayed the the Muslim girl. There was a Muslim girl character right. in it. And in it, oh, she like no. wanted to become a Christian or she was she was like reading her Bible and they made her dad come off like, I don't remember exactly, but it was almost like he would kill her or disown her if she, like, if he found her with a Bible, like really black and white, like made him out to be just this terrible, awful, mean person. And then I think at the end, she ends up like converting her entire Muslim family to Christianity because she brought a Bible home. Um, It's just so much propaganda. And it, and like, just the idea that they kill off the atheist because he was bad, like almost like God's punishment, but he got saved right at the last, he said the prayer right at the end. So became a Christian and went to heaven. And then all of the guy, the, the Christians were celebrating with this big concert because they stood up for God. So God rewarded them with, I guess, you know, he gets the girl at the end and the newsboys get to perform in a full crowd of people. God's not dead, which let's, let's wait, celebrate there's a that love the interest. Is, Hold on. Though. There's a love interest in the story. There is, but it's really at the end. They like pretty much just like smile at it. Like she's like, I admire so much what you did with that professor. And like kind of gives this like this smile that in Christian means like God told me you're my husband. And then he kind of gives her this smile back. That's like, God told me I accept. That was kind of it. Hey, um, <laughs> I'm here. I'm here for the MRS degree. Well, I'm here to get it, give you a ring by spring, baby. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I went to Christian college too. Um, I, man, that is so insane to me. The whole thing is just nuts. Like, and the fact that they could make four of these and, and what would, what would justify making a fourth one is they've made money on the other three. Like that yeah. is insane, but, but we haven't even touched like, on, well, you know, I looked by the way, sorry to interrupt Jeremy, but the first one had a $2 million production budget brought in $64 million. Now keep in mind, $64 million is nothing in the movie world. No, nothing. but, but, but they, they made but, a yeah. huge profit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think the, I think three brought in $2 million or something like that. So they like, hmm. they're not making huge bank, but yeah, $64 but million I do dollars think on a 2 million I budget is some money. Yes. I don't know that the other, that two and three were very nationalistic. I mean, there's always a little bit of that in there, but I do think they're, they're capitalizing for that. Actually that word works well, capitalizing on the fact that just how nationalistic the world, the Christians are right now with Trump and the insurrection and like fighting for your rights and <clears throat> Yeah, all this stuff. So, uh, the the comment you just put up uh, put up uh, by endless Mel, uh, 
the heckin' ROI. Yeah, it's all about <laughs> yeah. the return on investment. <laughs> That's exactly what I was thinking. Like as as a marketing guy at my core, like it, you know, they're they're seeing a huge ROI on what mm-hmm. they're putting out. And that's what it's ultimately about. And, and, and we haven't even, we haven't even touched on the, what, what is it? The Sherwood church or, or whatever, like all their mm-hmm. movies that they put out, you know, facing mm-hmm. the giants, courageous fireproof. Oh, yeah. Uh, this all was, of that stuff. This was something that Beach and I were talking about earlier that almost all of these movies have the, a male lead, usually white male. They might all be white male actually. Well, not all of them. There's some, I think there's they, some no, no, no. I think they all are. No, there's one that was about a football player. I think it was about a football player called something. And it, the main, the main lead was a black teen. I think, if, I but think, I didn't see I it. I think you're thinking of, was it not I, a Christian film? I, I, no, it was not. I, I think okay. thinking with Tim McGraw and Sandra Bullock. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, the no blind that's side. the blind side. Oh, no, I'm not talking about side. that. There's another one. Anyway, regardless, most of them anyway. feature white male leads. And we were talking about the one with yeah, the lady in the room. prayer room. By yeah, the, oh, yeah, War, war Room. room. War yeah. Room's the only one I think that probably wouldn't follow this. Oh, I, I, yeah. Um, I've seen that. yeah. Okay. Anyway, most of them are white male leads. And the males have some sort of like really masculine, macho type job. Like they're a cop or they're a football coach or they're a fireman. Firefighter. Yeah. And like they're like they're built built into their role of their job is being the hero. Yes. And it's very like kind of traditional gender roles. Like the wife's like the supportive, you know, stay at home partner. Oh and God, please help my husband. Yes. Yeah. Dear Lord. Yeah, so sweet baby Jesus, six pack, and, and you know, because these movies have to play to the audience there. And so, mm-hmm. you know, I always say the best Christian story ever, maybe other than the Bible, I guess we could argue that, but is is, is Les Mis. And there's not a single mm. reference to Jesus, there's not a single reference to somebody saying a sinner's prayer, but it tells more of the story of the grace of God than in. in and so when you make these movies and you have to pander to this evangelical audience, it comes out as a shitty, shitty movie. Yeah. Yeah. Beecher said, I want to see a new Sherwood film where the lead male is a professional dancer or where the lead male is a hairstylist or just something that's not like super masculine. <laughs> I mean, that's like- such a, that's such a good point though. You know, yeah. Beecher, mm-hmm. Beecher nail on the head again. Like, yeah. I mean, I, I, like, for example, I think of uh, a student that I used to have in my youth ministry who got his cosmetology license while he was in high school. Now, he's a he's a strength and conditioning coach at a division one school now. Mm. But like he was he was a hair guy, like coming out of high school, like that's what he did. And to get himself through college, like he paid his own way through college to do hair. Like, I want to see that. I want to hear about that. You know what I mean? But mm-hmm. that's not masculine enough. That's not strong enough. That's not whatever it is. Right. You know? Like I, it's just bullshit. Yeah. I think hell will freeze over before like an actual Christian film is made where like the wife is the worker and they have a stay at home dad. <laughs> Or they something. need to come do it. They need it. They need to come get them some here at the Coleman household because, <laughs> like, like I'll tell you all about it. Like, I will, yeah, I, will I know. Featuring Jeremy Coleman, that pastor from Oklahoma. The okay, movie. guys. Speaking of shitty movies, yes. Show the next one. Uh, April did a blind react oh, to a trailer the other day, and we've just got to show this. I yeah, just. Yes. Just just roll it. There's nothing else to say here <laughs> just than just roll it. this is un F word believable. <laughs> Should have just said it. My job as a fire was to react calm. You can't afford to have feelings about it. You need to kill me. In my work, I've seen everything. But what I saw last night scared me so much. See, firemen. That was a good observation, by the way, April. <laughs> Until recently, nobody knew what PTSD was. Lord, I need you to heal him. Until there later. she is. Yeah. <laughs> Baby Jesus. <laughs> so it's a PTSD movie. It's a little scary. Which is important. <laughs> Very <aggressive treatment. laughs> You have to minimize PTSD. Like that's mental insulting. health movie. I like it. It's insulting. Just, just give us a window to what's going on inside. I got this one in 2011. The Commander in Chief prophecy. 
Wait, what? <laughs> what? God is telling us to pray for our country, its leadership, and those in authority over us. What just what happened? Do do? They're going at him. Truth <laughs> and claw. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, then will I hear from Seek my face and turn and from their, their wicked life. ways. So is so is so for, for those listening. The, yes, it, the turning from your wicked. They head. showed for those that are listening that didn't get to see it. They showed newspaper newspaper headlines that's like Trump has zero chance of winning, discounting Trump, and then the the title screen rolls <laughs> at the end and it's the Trump prophecy. So I feel like I have whiplash because that started mm -hmm. off like some kind of PTSD movie. <laughs> And then somehow turned into they're going after Trump hard. And also the screen in the middle that was like the dream that started an international movement of prayer. What like praying for Trump? I, uh, That's a real uh, movie, by the way. And WTF, the what just happened? Has anybody seen it? <laughs> no, but apparently, so that came out in 2018. So I think that was about the 2016 election, which is why they made it because the, the prophecy came true. No, that's exactly what it was. Um, yeah. But so I, <laughs> someone told me that you can watch the full thing on YouTube. No, no, nope, so desire. I don't, I don't, I don't care. I don't uh, care. I'm sorry. I'm going to have to watch it. I, it, it's, Are it's you? a train wreck that I cannot take my eyes so off. So here's, here's we could do a watch party, a live watch <laughs> I party. I was just gonna say that. <laughs> April, oh my gosh, get out of my head. I was just gonna say that. I was gonna say it, we should do like a special evangelicalish night where we all hop on and just straight up show the movie and just make fun of the whole thing. I, I would mm -hmm. mystery science theater three thousand. Yeah. <laughs> We just we just mock the movie the whole way through. Mystery anti science theater. Yeah. That's probably more like it. <laughs> let me let me ask this. It, and since it's almost eight forty, I, I want to ask this question. Okay. Okay. Um, we have we have spent a lot of time time dogpiling really crappy Christian uh, art, and and rightfully so. They they deserve every piece. Let me ask you guys this. Is there art that still shows you um, the heart of God the that gives you a spiritual or emotional experience um, outside of that realm? Because we've, we've talked about music tonight. We've talked a lot about the movies or whatever. Have there been moments when you have felt a deeper emotional experience, spiritual experience, whatever, and I want to be kind to everybody, it, it that's listening, right? Because not everybody's a Christian. So, uh, but, but have, has there been stuff outside of that realm? And especially with the three of us coming from that very like conservative evangelical background, like ha have there been things outside of that, that have given you that a deeper spiritual experience, um, that have mattered to you? Yeah. I mean, there's been, there's been, <laughs> Several. I mean, there's been shows too that I would watch in like certain segments. Like honestly, I'm gonna show my heathenness, I guess. <laughs> but there were several moments, especially uh, like in the later half of the series and Game of Thrones, because Game of Thrones actually deals with a lot of spiritual themes. Um, although the first two seasons have a lot of nudity, so I just feel like I need to say that. That I, yes. I have heard that. I, anyway, go ahead. Anyway, now that you know, whatever art. Um, yeah, art. Some 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 of. I, I am, I'm about to go off on like nudity and art, but anyway, um, there were some really beautiful moments in game of Thrones. And <laughs> I remember like being moved to tears, especially cause I was kind of starting deconstruction a couple years ago and I didn't, I didn't have a word for it. I was just kind of questioning some things and just kind of, I, I felt very alone with all the Trump stuff and the nationalism. And I was feeling very just like, what's the point? Like, what, what am I doing? Like, how can I spread the love of Jesus that I feel like I'm supposed to be spreading to people when the loudest Christians are damning everyone around me to hell and, and frankly, damning me to hell. And, um, there was this moment and actually, I think I made a TikTok about it recently because Paul made a prompt with this similar question. Um, but it was just like, they were talking about one of the gods in their, in their, in their world. And it's just like, what if, like, what are we supposed to do? Like, how do we know what God wants us to do? And it was like, maybe we just need to 
fight for those who can't fight for themselves and do our best. Maybe that's enough. Mm. And I was like, oh, tears. Maybe that's enough. And then the next day I saw some stupid Christian on Facebook that posted. It was like an article that was like, if you watch Game of Thrones, you're watching porn. And then I like, I like commented, like, you know what? There's actually, it's actually a really beautiful story that yes, there is some nudity, but if you could get past the first two seasons, it's, it like calms down a lot. Cause HBO was like, Hey, we don't have to throw in boobies every scene. Um, and then, and then I, <laughs> they were like, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I just want to remind everybody there's lots of sex in the Bible. Just Yes. No, there is. But it's a great question, Jeremy. And like I can I'm I grew up charismatic, so I can I can tell you about a Holy Spirit experience I had to a Tom Petty song once, you know, because I just believe God loves loves excellence. That that Mm -hmm. excellence in art does something to us. It moves us. But I I would just say, my wife and I just watched White Lotus. Have you guys heard about White Lotus? Yeah, I've heard of it. We we watched it. I watched it. So uh, brilliantly done. Brilliant show. And such a commentary on white privilege. I recommend. Mm -hmm. And so there are scenes that will make Christians blush beyond belief. Uh, You know, I almost wanted to hit the fast forward button on some of the scenes. But but it's such a brilliant, brilliant uh, commentary on white privilege that I would say that's a great spiritual moving show mm. that everybody should watch. And yes, there's lots of nudity and uh, and some other crazy stuff, but it's it's 100% worth watching and brilliantly, brilliantly done. And just seeing art done that well just does mm-hmm. does something to me spiritually for sure. Yeah. yeah, I agree. I, I so I've got a, I've got a lot of experiences like that, just like both of you do. But I actually had one really super recently um, that just rattled me in a crazy way. Like I had just lost the church that I was at. I I was stepping out of my day job. My kids were like super obsessed with this movie, and <clears throat> I hadn't heard of it. You know. Um, and things come out on streaming services so fast now mm-hmm. that you're like, oh, oh, I didn't even know that was out, you know, or whatever. Well, so uh, Alex Lacamoire and Lynn Manuel Miranda, um, famously from you know the duo that that wrote all the music and stuff to Hamilton, okay. Um, <clears throat> which, by the way, if you're not a Lynn Manuel Miranda fan, you can like you know, I'll. Uh, bye um but <laughs> i'm just I, i'm a big fan but they came out with a, a they wrote the music for a children's movie called vivo um, mm, i, I that. love vivo and there's a song on that album called keep the beat and it is like so you know i, I mean there, there there's there's a whole storyline i don't, I don't want to run it for anybody but it's it's very powerful and in this song, uh, Lynn Manuel Miranda, who plays uh, a chick rat, which is like a little like rodent thing, mm-hmm. <laughs> like basically looks like a monkey kind of. Um, the chorus to that song is, and it's just about overcoming like obstacles and stuff like that. Mm. The chorus to that song is, "All I can do when the road bends is lean into the curve, and all I can do when the tank runs dry." is see what's in reserve and all I can do when the plans break down is stay on my feet. And all I can do at the end of the day is play on and keep the beat. And I, I just, Hmm. I, I remember like hearing that song and, and, and Lynn's just got like this, like place to my heart, I guess. But the song is just so powerful. Alex writes a beautiful piece of music to it. Hmm. And, and it just, it just hit me right where I was at. I was just like, all I can do is just lean into the curve and all I can do. And, and as a musician, as a percussionist, like all the way through college, like all I can do is just keep playing on, you know, like Mm -hmm. just, just keep counting the bars, keep playing the music. Like it just, it just rattled me. Like, Mm. and Mm. you know, like, and uh, like, it was just, it was just a great moment because like, um, like I was listening to it in my truck with my kids, 
you know, and they're singing the song and they know it. And I was just like, man, they're just like singing to my heart, mm. you know? And it was just, like, it was just, I don't, I don't know. Sorry. It was no, just like, don't love, apologize. It. love it. No. It was just so powerful, you mm. know? And, and it was, it was like, it was like such a spiritual, emotional experience. I mean, even still, I guess, apparently. Yeah. yeah. But, but like, it was, just, it just reminded me that it's okay. And like, yeah. we can stay on the path. We can keep fighting and we can keep moving ahead. And, um, you know, and, and that we just, we, we just take the good and the bad and we take them in stride and, um, you know, everything, everything is working like, mm -hmm. you know, not, not to be overly Christian, but like, you know, these moments, like we're supposed to feel all these emotions. We're supposed to experience mm -hmm. all these emotions and it's good. And, um, anyway, so it, it was great. And so now I get to sing that song in the, in the truck with my kids and yeah, it's, it's a ton of well, I think that's what good art does. Good art meets yeah. you where you're at. Yes. And and can relate to these emotions. Like real art, like or good art. I mean, I guess everything is technically art if you want to be generous. But good art tells a story of the good and the bad. It doesn't it doesn't mm, whitewash right. things. It doesn't um sugarcoat things. It shows that life can be really hard and it can really, really suck. But this person or who, whoever you're watching or listening to their story, this person went through what you're going through or something similar that you're going through and they came through or they didn't come through, but they're still okay. And you can still be okay. And the, like, we're all part of this messy life. And like, that's just, that to me is what good art does. It's, it helps you reflect on your own life and it helps you. It's, it's seeing yourself on a screen in some way. And I love how subjective art is too, because we could all watch the same movie or listen to the same song and come away with a different message. Mm, that's good. Oh, oh, here's one, by the way, Ted Lasso. Ted mm. Lasso is about as, as Christian a show that's out there right now. That it does feel pretty fantastic. Christian. Yeah, I love um, it. Beecher mentioned too, I don't know if y'all have seen Bo Burnham's Inside special on Netflix. But it's amazing. His song Funny Feeling. Whew. That's like he he took us to church. Oof. If you haven't seen it, it's it's also really funny. I just know Dave Chappelle just came out with a new special and I'm really <laughs> excited to watch it. Oh. And when you think of it like a, a, a movie like Inside Out, did you guys see it? Was, was oh, that the one that about I the can, young girl? I can't watch that without crying. I cry every oh. time. It's so I mean, good. That's the the beautiful messiness of humanity. Mm -hmm. I love movies like that, that were just messy. And it's mm -hmm. beautiful that we're messy. I, I, I love that. Somebody mentioned, remember the Titans earlier and remember the Titans is, is an amazing movie to me. And, and part of it was because like it had the, it had the dynamic of talking about the racial issues, mm -hmm. but it, it highlighted more of, um, Denzel Washington's character as the hero, right. Mm -hmm. Versus the white hero. Like I think of, I, I think of like, you know, cause there's so many movies that like address like racial issues in our country, but there's this white savior that comes mm -hmm. in. Like I, I think of the help. Right. And it's like Emma Wa or Emma. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, not Emma Watson, but yes, I know who you're talking red about. Redheaded girl. Um, golly that's gonna bug me anyway but you know she like rises as the white savior character mm -hmm. or whatever um you know just the the focus on denzel washington and you know and his character coming in you know based on a real story which i know there's been some discrepancies as far as like how real or whatever that was but they totally I think, changed the story <laughs> yeah they did they did and, and 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 you hear those things emma stone thank you brian um, <laughs> but like, uh, they did totally change the story, but I think, I think the story in and of itself that was portrayed was really powerful. And, and I think they did a good job of keeping like Denzel's character as, as the hero yeah, right? and, and the guy that was making the change. Um, mm -hmm. and he was, he was the one not only facing the adversity, but also making the change. And I think there's something really powerful in that. Yeah. Well, 
It is. We nice. sort of blew through that other segment, didn't we? I know. Well, so we were going to talk we, about Christian music and worship. By the way, can I throw in real fast the Blind Side? Mm-hmm. You know, the 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 movie that mm-hmm. the 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 football player that the movie and the yeah, book is yeah. about. He hates yeah. it. By the way, he hates it. Mm-hmm. He hates and it. So do so do his parents. And his parents hate it too. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And, and, they're they're like, and that was a movie about white white saviorism. White saviorism. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it sure was. <laughs> it sure was. Yeah. Shame um, on you, Tim McGraw and Sandra Bullock. Yes. Yeah. And Taco Bell. And Taco <laughs> Bell. Okay. Well, Sorry, if, I jumped we're, in I'm just trying to, we should, we said we were going to talk about Facebook. So we should talk about Facebook for at least a few minutes. Let's just talk about Facebook very briefly. Well, yeah. just you know, Facebook had a whistleblower come out mm-hmm. and, and it really yeah. goes to this idea of, of the echo chamber and playing to the audience as, as Christian media does. But this whistleblower has come out and said, Facebook knows what they're doing is harmful in this echo chamber that they're creating in social media, where people Mm -hmm. are getting their news from social media. And particularly in spaces like Myanmar and Ethiopia, uh, this, this woman was a part of a group telling the Facebook leadership, hey, we are creating trouble in the world. And we Mm -hmm. may even overturn some governments in what we're doing. And Facebook decided they had a choice. We either change what we're doing with the algorithm to save this disinformation stuff we're doing and lose money, or we just keep doing what we're doing to protect our income. Mm -hmm. And they chose the income. Yeah, And this woman has thousands and thousands and thousands of pages. She just testified in front of Congress, I think yesterday and today, uh, of email that prove Facebook knew full well that they that their platform was causing trouble. And they said, we don't care. We want the money. Yeah. Well, that makes sense. And uh, there's quite literally been democracies or governments overthrown in different countries overseas because of how they've rallied people. Did you laugh at that? Take away my, I I, I honestly think we should start a petition. Like it's not going to solve all the problems, but if they just take away the option for people to share. Uh, I struggle with that April. I I think they need to, or the, or at least make it to where like, if you, if you click share, you have to like sign some kind of agreement or read something like make it (laughs) more difficult for someone to share. Like you have to watch an entire Rick roll or something. Um, (laughs) but you have to watch all four of the God's not dead movies. By the way. (laughs) Oh my God. No. Um, by the way, I think you're, I think your your video on this April was so spot on about like when Facebook shut down, like how people can't do their own, you know, mm-hmm. I can't do my own research. Or whatever. Yeah. Like, I thought that was really, really good and really, really astute. Like, like it was funny, mm-hmm. but it was really true. Anyway, sorry. Yeah. Well, that's where these people are doing their research. I mean, maybe, and, and for the record, let's just set the record straight. None of us, unless we are doing like peer reviewed, like lab work, we are not doing our own research. We are we are googling stuff, yeah. or reading memes on Facebook. Like yeah. we we are not quote unquote doing our own research. We're not in a lab. We're not analyzing data and ones and zeros. Like so. Anyway, just wanted to get that out of the way. Um, it's important when you see a headline on social media and you're like, "What?" Mm-hmm. That you then go to some other sources and say, is that really what the story is? And certainly not mm-hmm. off the headline. And some people just see the headline, share it. I can't believe this. My, and that's my... why that's why spoof sites like Babylon B are so successful because they can just right. write the nuttiest, most outrageous headline and people will share it. So well, I'm I go. Go no, go ahead, April. Well, go I was going to tell a funny story real quick. One time I got an email. My mom used to send us just stuff all the time. She has since learned. She's like deconstructing. She knows about Snopes and fact checking things and all this stuff now. But at one point in her life, she did not. And my husband still makes fun of her for it. But she sent us a, an article one time about this family that that they were in an RV and a tornado came and took them up and that they got, they lived for two hours floating in a tornado 
in their RV and then they landed safely somewhere else. And it was like this whole article of like, yeah, you know, we were having conversation after about an hour because we're like, well, I guess you're up here for a while. And, and I think like the, the main character's name was Dorothy. Like they were totally making fun of Wizard of Oz, but my mom thought it was real. And she like sent it to us. She was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. And we're like, mom, there's no way that that happened. <laughs> oh yeah. They landed in Kansas. It like took them up. I like took them to anyway, across the state to land them in Kansas. Anyway, I just wanted to share that. I mean, that was a harmless misinformation, but she still shared it because that's what you can do on Facebook. You can just share that's, things. Yeah. You, you can share things whenever you want. And, you know, I mean, people see, I, I was trying to find something that I saw earlier from the Babylon Bee. It, oh yeah. The differences between prison and public school. And some of the stuff was just, it, it was, it was so ridiculous. Cause there's, there's like a, there's a, there's a little bit of like, they mean some serious stuff. Like when they put out that satire like that. Right. And there was just some stuff that <laughs> felt really gross. <laughs> <clears throat> and, and I, I just, I am not, you know, I, yeah. Oh, they, I feel like Babylon B used to be place. funny and now they're not, or oh, they used well, to be funnier. So they, so they went through a, they went through an ownership change mm. and I think their new owners are like very conservative and very like, yeah, that makes know. more sense because it, it seemed to be it seemed like they went after Trump a lot more and now it's more go like more pro Trump stuff. Just I just have to say that my mom is apparently watching because I just got a text from her that says, What? <laughs> Y'all dreamt that. I don't remember that at all. Uh. Like, mom, we could probably find that message. But I, I I complimented you, mom. You're not you are better now. So all right, we can get to We love you. <laughs> oh, we better watch our language with mom watching. Now. We, we are, Paul. We are doing that now. <laughs> but yeah, I, I mean, I've had I've had people on Facebook before share something, and I've and I've reached out to them to say this is not a true story, and and I I show them the information to show it's not true, and they'll say literally, and I've had this happen numerous times. They'll say, "Well, it you know the idea is still true." The mm -hmm. idea is it, the idea is still right. I'm like, what? you just shared an untrue story, and you're going to leave it up because Biden's bad. Yeah, you know, so mm -hmm. the story may be untrue, but he's still bad. So I'm going to leave it up. I I just think that at the end of the day, like we we have got to do a better job of you know I, just doing your your own personal fact checking like there are there are a handful like a small handful of places that i will accept as acceptable news or mm -hmm. or correct news or you know whatever and i mean it's like it's like the ap and npr like it's very mm -hmm. like narrow right yeah. like you know i mean and people would accuse npr of being left a little bit but yeah. but you know, I mean, they are still doing a diligent job of making sure that like what they're reporting actually like literally happened, you know, whereas you get like yeah. Breitbart or freaking what is right, you know, OAN, Newsmax. Yeah, OAN oh, God, and Newsmax. Yeah. Those, yeah. Mm -hmm. those are, uh, but making I, you know, when up. I see making, something that I want to get, up. sorry, sorry, mom. No, it's okay. Sorry, Jerry. I, I mean, for me, it's, if I see something that I'm going to get incensed about, I will, you know, if I see it on the Washington Post, I'll I'll go I'll, I'll go see what Fox is saying about it. Let let me get Fox's perspective, although because they're not Wapo's pretty good though. Wapo's brilliant. I mean, the writers yeah. are amazing. Mm -hmm. But any any extreme right wing Trumpist will say Wapo is is a part of the conspiracy. So, so I try to find though, what what is BBC saying about it? What mm -hmm. is Reuters saying about it? What is USA yeah. Today saying about it? And even then I'll look at Fox because I think it's now like the least nutty of the crackhead networks. Yeah. Well, and, there were and, a lot of yeah. conservatives that were uh, boycotting Fox after oh, yeah. they had, after they announced still. Biden won. Still. Yeah, they're yeah, still they're, like they're, Fox is too liberal. Fox is too <laughs> liberal. It's like it's like here in Oklahoma that James Lankford is too liberal. Mm. Mm. Like he's, he has voted like ninety eight percent conservative over the last like six years or whatever, but he's too liberal. Yeah, yeah. that's insane. stupid. Well, like my uncle will say, like, oh, you can't trust the MSM. You can't trust any media. And 
medium at all and then listens to OAN and Newsmax. Yeah. That's yeah. Just, like I think you had a song about that too though, April, like right? Be like uh I dare oh, not trust the I swing. do not trust the MSM. I'll trust Newsmax and OAN. Oh, it's so good. Trump oh, so good. alone. Hello. Yeah. Roger oh. Stone. <laughs> one. Oh my gosh. All right. Uh, we got to go, go to our last call. segment. Yeah, huh? yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all, we had getting... no breaks tonight. We just went. No, we need to. We were just <laughs> going. <laughs> Jeremy, tell everybody what we're doing next. Okay. I I know we're doing a game next about some some titles. Uh, I'm sorry. I was so frazzled before the show. Somebody, <laughs> sorry. I don't know. Okay. So what we were going to do Thank is we you. can all, we can all come up I with some. I have one written down that I came up with, but we want you guys to give us titles for what God's Not Dead 5 should be. Yes. <laughs> Wrong answers only, please. So God's not dead five yeah. blank. Fill yes. in the blank. <laughs> so I wrote down, this is the one that I came up with. Um, I wrote down God's not dead five, the insurrection of Christ. The what? The, the insurrection. insurrection of Christ instead of resurrection. <laughs> the insurrection of Christ. Oh, mm. that's good. That's really good, April. <laughs> Thank you. I mean... <laughs> and the hat tip. Go. God's not dead. Five. He got. He vaccinated. got vaccinated. <laughs> <laughs> mm. That's really good. Mine oh is is God. God's not dead. Uh, but he's really really pissed. <laughs> That's pretty good. I wanted to be like God's not dead, but this franchise should be. <laughs> That's right. yeah, yeah. Oh man, I, I I'm I'm curious. Like yeah. God's not dead, and neither is Elvis. Yeah, neither, neither is Tupac. Yeah. Neither yeah, so is he, Kennedy. Hey, false hey, the... Tupac's alive. Don't, don't Tupac's don't. not dead. He's surely alive. He's living down out of his Cuba. best life somewhere on an island. On a... Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, oh! You you literally did that. I did literally I do that. About, but they pulled it down. Didn't they? It did. And then I reposted it later. That's fine. TikTok and I, we're, we're on a rough, <laughs> we have a rough Josh relationship. He's pissed. Okay. Yeah. Let's read some of the, yeah. God's yeah. not dead. <laughs> God's back in Easter. God's not dead five. America will always be alive. <laughs> By Lori. <laughs> Live. God's, not, God's dead, not But you're about to be. The smiting. Oh. <laughs> the smiting. God's not dead five. The smiting. Uh, mm. That's a horror film. That's so good. It's really like, can I say? God's not dead and the earth is flat. God's not dead. The earth is flat. God's not dead. Five. Ronald's not dead, but Biden is. God's not dead. Five. The recount. The recount. Oh, so I want to think like God's not dead. Five. And this time it's personal. Yeah. (laughs) God's not the immaculate constipation. Yeah. Hey. Mm. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. God's not dead. Civil War. Mm. That makes me nervous. Ooh. That's a little close to home. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh. Someone commented on like my video a while back, so I can't take credit for this. But they said, "God's not dead." Five. Jason born again. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. That's yeah. a good one. Uh, oh a lot of people are saying God. Katie's uh, God's not dead. He got vaccinated. It's going to be hard to beat. I God's mean, not dead. he got vaccinated. I know that is, that one is pretty. God's not dead. He got the jab. He got the jab. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no. I, I think masks are evil. Masks, <laughs> masks are masks evil. <laughs> Patriarchy forever. Yeah. Oh, oh no. Oh my gosh. <laughs> to him. Don't do it to him. God's, God's not, not dead. dead and he, he has, has a big gun. I I mean <laughs> I don't know. That's crazy. God's not dead five. AR fifteen. Yeah. I want to be like, God's not dead five loaves of fishes for men, but with a pH. <laughs> God's not dead five loaves. Like fishing, like pH, like you know. yeah. Wow. Well, good stuff. We have creative people out there. Jesus has a flag. <laughs> <clears throat> These are some good ones. Y'all, y'all came prepared. God's yeah. not dead five judgment day. Oof. 
Jesus has a flag. And Katie would like to thank the Academy, her parents, and her dog for the award for answer of the night. It was really good, Katie. That was really good. It was really good. <laughs> it was excellent. Eh? <laughs> oh, my gosh. God's not dead five. Jesus and John Wayne. <laughs> Ooh. I, Ooh. That one's pretty good. <laughs> what about what about this one? God's not dead five left behind. Combine both franchises Ooh. in a universal crossover. Whoa. The Christians that God left behind. God's not dead five. All the ones that didn't fight for the homeschoolers didn't make the cut. God's not dead five, and neither is Kirk Cameron. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mark guys, the beast. we are trying to keep it closer to an hour. <laughs> yes, so, do. oh, I do want to say, uh, Beecher wrote this in the comment, and I want to say it too, but the SBC, we talked last week how they voted, the executive committee voted against um, uh, waiving their privilege and doing an open investigation, which everyone was really mad about uh, with the sexual assault allegations. Um, but they did a revote yesterday, I think. And, yeah, and, and so they, they're now waiving their uh, client attorney privilege. And so now it is going to be a transparent. Why are you shaking your head? It's not. Why are you giving a thumbs too down? Too little, too late. Yeah. Well, like, yeah. You guys, I mean, you guys screwed it up in the beginning, and then you you felt a bunch of pressure, and everybody threw a big old fit, and 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 they got scared. That's not what they really wanted to do. Well, it's what the they thing did is, under but, pressure. But people were already throwing a fit, and they still voted against it. So, I, for the record, I am not clearing any names by any means because they all still suck, except for the people that voted yeah. for it the first time. But they are doing an open investigation now. So, well, congratulations, but <laughs> you succumb to pressure. Yeah, yeah they well get done. for the record, they get no congratulations, but I am glad on behalf of the survivors that things will be able that's to come a, to that's light. That's a fair point, April. Yeah. That's such a good point because when I saw mm -hmm. that, I was just like, oh, okay, you know, but I guess it's better than them like sticking by their guns. So, I, mm -hmm. you know, on behalf of the survivors, that's a really good point. I, I, you know, not that I hadn't thought about. Uh, survivors in that in that sense, but just mm -hmm. oh, man, it, it's just like man, no, you guys already screwed it up. Like you got it so wrong. Yeah, they get they get absolutely no credit for it. But I am glad that it'll it will be able to come to light. Well done. Here's a good one. To end on G and D five return of Trump. Take that. No, mm. no, no. <laughs> that feels too real to me. <laughs> too soon. Yeah, so and it hasn't even happened spring. yet. I did see a headline though, that Trump said he may not actually run in 2024 and cited health reasons after saying that he would like the Ooh. day before. I think that yeah, was a Babylon B right? article. He's, yeah, it's a bad one. I, th I thought I saw it on CNN, but maybe. Oh, April, well, so. April saw it on uh, April saw it in the uh, uh, the, the Jim Baker show, probably. Ooh, <laughs> God's not dead. Five America deconstructs what Brian said. Oh. Ooh, they, oh, I bet they would do one on deconstruction, like the evils of, <laughs> or God's not dead. Five critical grace theory. Oh, oh, <laughs> and. We appreciate you guys tuning in this week. Boom. Thank you so much. We're so grateful for you. Uh, every single week, you can uh, you can subscribe on any of your major podcast platforms. Just search Evangelicalish. Follow us on all the major social media platforms as well. Evangelicalish, uh, Evangelical with an ISH. And there's also an Evangelicalish Facebook group uh, that you can join. So come and join and join the conversation there. We would absolutely love for you to be there. Uh, so anyway, with April's incredible <laughs> comment, critical you guys got to make that movie, April. <laughs> critical grace theory. Critical Ew, barf. grace theory. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a winner. Oh, man. Uh, for Paul and April, I'm Jeremy. Thank you so much for you guys turning in, tuning in tonight. We love you so much. And for those of you who subscribe to the podcast and listen later, we can't tell you how grateful we are for you. Uh, we love all of you. And uh, so anyway, uh, for the for them and for myself. Uh, we will see you next week. Love God, love people passionately, no strings attached. We'll see you next week. Good night. <laughs>